Before starting a family, my only thing I ever knew I wanted to be was a father. Before falling in love with Camilla and asking for her hand in marriage and us starting a family, I fully expect to pull this off. <laughs> that does not mean that we do not recalibrate <laughs> and reassess. Do what you can to have access to them because they want to shut down at 13, they shut down until 19, and all of a sudden they come home one day at 19 and go, oh, I just realized everything you were saying back the last six years was right on, I'm sorry about that. And you're like, after six years, you want me to just be over it? And it's like, whoa, we've had them. If you are happy and you wake up every morning, you feel good and you are working month to month, but you're happy doing what you do, bravo. That's a real definition of success that is more successful than somebody who has a billion dollars, but they're lonely broken relationships and are regretting how they got to where they are. One of our challenges in life, me included, in relationships is that, boy, it gets hot and we wanna quit. And there's an investment we can have with overcoming those hot spots that do build. And we, we get some scars on us. And it's good, it's armor for a relationship. It's armor for parents. It's like, damn, that was hard. It's one in the morning, I gotta, I gotta work at seven. <sighs> Okay, but it was worth it. It's just, I got, I, got, I got another scar. And we don't bat a thousand by any means, but we just hang in there and hang in the fight. Hi everyone, welcome to the Gabby Ree Show. On this show, we discuss the complex topics around relationships, health, fitness, family, business, and so much more with the world's leading experts. My goal is to simplify these topics and give you practical takeaways that you can start using in your life today. We all know that living a healthy, balanced life can be challenging. So let's try managing life a little better and have some fun along the way. Because after all, life is just one big experiment. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. My guest today is Oscar-winning actor and New York Times bestselling author, Matthew McConaughey. He came onto the podcast to talk about his latest book. It's a children's book called Just Because. You can find it in audio and, of course, hard books, wherever books are sold. Um, and when I was reading the book, I thought, you know, I, I really appreciated, even though it is a children's book, the respect that he has for the reader, the complexity in the messaging in the book, which is it's sort of like some of the unfair or the nuanced things about how life is. And he talks about it. And I think, you know, he said he was inspired by a ditty that he was, uh, had in his sleep. And that's what he thought it was going to be sort of like a, a ditty sort of song, but it ended up uh, becoming just because we talked a lot about parenting and being in a long relationship. And he was really forthcoming about what he has learned and what he continues to work on and what seems to work for his family and for him and his beautiful wife, Camilla. And I, I really enjoyed the idea that all of us are pretty much going through a lot of the same things, no matter who we are. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Matthew McConaughey. I love this. Thank you. Uh, so, okay. I, I love the fact that it made sense to me when you wrote Green Lights, because it's like you have a lot to share. You've had an interesting journey, observations, kind of this, you know, I think when people are in any sort of perceived extreme reality, they can really sort of say, oh, this is sort of the view from here. And that's interesting. But I, I really wasn't surprised that you wrote, that you wrote just because a children's book. But I, I was like, I wondered if Green Lights gave you the confidence mm -hmm. um, to be like, oh, yeah, I I, I can I can write something um, or or was this really because it was a dream? I did see that you said, hey, this came to me as a dream. It came to me as a dream. I thought it was a ditty, which it kind of is. I thought it was a Bob Dylan rap song. Just because I threw the dart don't mean that is stuck. Just because they got skills don't mean there is no luck. So I just woke up to that rhythm and started writing things down. Um, I mean, having kids, I'm seeing the world through the lens, the lens of my kids and those dependents differently than I, than I have since before. them. so evidently I kind of maybe dream to those ideas too, what I think could be valuable to them. Um, I, uh, you know what, I think part of the exercise, I don't know if it was the confidence from green lights, but I'm always trying to go, how do you make what I think are cool messages digestible? 
how do we make Sunday morning and Monday morning feel more like a Saturday night? Well, you know, how do we make the broccoli taste good, right? So we get a little bit of rhyme, some illustrations, make it digestible for children and the child and all of us adults. Whereas you could, I mean, you could, you could unpack a lot of what I write in the book and make it very, it could be very, very academic and it would go over a child's head, you know? Yeah. Well, what's interesting though, I have to say in just because, cause I read it a couple of times is I always appreciate because as you know, young people are very, very smart and you in fact, talk up at them in this book. This isn't, it, it's, it's like you have to really pay attention. These lessons in here, um, I thought were actually, you know, high-minded, high-brow that you were respecting um, the kids. And it was a great reminder, like you said, to the child and all of us, because it is very thoughtful. Well, thank you. That's a really cool thing you said. I'm going to remember that. I, I think I am talking up to them and I meant to talk up to them um, and not talk down to us adults, but also remind us adults, Hey, this is stuff that, uh, you know, we kind of have going on too and need to let's, let's, we don't, we don't need to be talked up to, but let's remember, you know, um, this for ourselves. Um, yeah. I did try to talk up to me, you know, you, yeah, you said it. Our children understand a whole lot more than I know. I originally thought they did. When they were when they were really young, and then you find out, you know that 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 you know for, for first you don't want to first you don't you know when they're young you, and you don't want to know you're you you you're 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 having corn for dinner. You spell it out, the C O R N, and you get away with it. And all of a sudden, before you know they can spell, they're like, I know you're saying corn. So then you start going maize, and you say it in Spanish or something, and you're like, they don't understand that. And all of a sudden they go, I know what corn is in Spanish. And all of a sudden you're like, they get stuff a lot earlier than we think they did. And, and this, if, if they can see themselves in these scenarios, this is not about making them get older more quickly, but it's about them hopefully realizing this is kind of how life works. And not just now for you in your life, but a way to a lens to see life through that you're going to, it's going to be helpful later on in life. And that's, that's what I mean. Like I started, you know, I, I'll be honest. It's sort of like, I think like most of us, we go, oh, it's a kid's book. It has illustrations. There's a tree house on the, on the cover. But when I started flipping the pages, I, I, I was like, uh, oh yeah, these are, these are concepts for life. This is for all of us. And yes, you made them in, in, in a way that a kid goes, oh yes, I've, I have a Christmas present to a pair of socks, but it's still what it represents. So I, I really appreciated that. Um, I, Okay, so now that you have teenagers, I, yeah, yeah. I have I have a few teenagers myself. <laughs> you have this. The impression is is that you do have an easygoingness to you, um, and a, a and you said it earlier. It's like, hey, how do we make Monday morning school still like could have this idea of fun? And I and I and I I wonder how have you been able to maintain that? Because being a parent, it's, it's, you can be cool almost everywhere else in your life, but we don't have that objectivity when it comes to our own children. And I wonder, do you, are you able to maintain that with your three children that still that ease and that fluidness that it does appear that you, you know, you sort of bring to your life? Not always. <laughs> Thank God. Maybe that, Thank you. Maybe, that, maybe I'm undersell, maybe I'm overselling myself by saying not always. If my family was in it right now, they would they might say not usually, <laughs> and maybe that would even be oversell myself because I know there's times and there's weeks where it's like not often. Um, so yeah, look, I mean, we try, but as you know, saying no or or, or following through on a guideline. Is a whole lot harder than just being cool and going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's to the detriment of, of, our, of our children if we just yeah. do that because you said it. I mean, we're not here. It's nice when we can, when our, when our children can talk to us as friends and have access and we can talk to them. Yeah, you know, I had this similar scenario too, but that's not our job is to just be friends with our children. We're doing a disservice to them if it is. Or what is evolution for? What are we parents for? We made them. We have experience. We have 18 years or more 
to sort of shape and guide them to how life's going to work and what consequences are for choices they make. And we know if we don't if we don't give them the right consequences now when they're young, yeah, life's going to be a lot harder and harsher than our consequences are going to be. You know, we were having this question. I was having this conversation with one of my sons uh, this morning, and it is a weekday, Monday morning. We got schoolwork to do. We got stuff to do. Well, look, last night we were having such a good time. We were listening to music. We had dinner. We made late night scrambled eggs. It's all great. But we know today's, we know we got to do the work. So we can either hum and I don't feel like doing it. But you know you got to do it. So if, we, if there's something that we don't have a choice of not doing, let's figure out how to do it with pleasure. So how can we see Monday morning and work we have to do, responsibilities we have to take care of is like, can we still dance through this and sing a song while we're doing the work? Yes, we can. It's hard, but yes, we can. Because what's the what's the what's the uh, what's 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 the alternative? Right. Okay, don't do it. Bad grades. Get back now. You're gonna lose. Now you're gonna lose some privileges. You're gonna get grounded. You're gonna lose that fun weekend. If you just take care of it with that. We, that, I read that quote and I shared it with my kids the other day about better to take a small sip of poison every day than to have to gulp the whole gallon at the end of the month. Yeah. Come on, guys. We got to put in the work each day just a little bit before things get too far behind. And sometimes we'll slip. But, man, those consequences come and we regret it and it comes out awkwardly and it's harder. So let's just take care of what we need to take care of day to day. And if we get in that rhythm, we can have a little dance and can be cool and seem nice and easy. But as you know, that doesn't always happen. Yeah, no. And it's, it's interesting also having, I have three daughters and they're all very, very different. And you like sports a lot. And mm -hmm. I, I know you've had coaches in your life and you know how a coach will have the art of speaking to each individual athlete. I'd liken it to probably the way a director can talk to a performer. It's like mm -hmm. one needs to be left alone. One needs to be like, Hey, take it easy on yourself. One needs yeah, a yeah, kick yeah. in the ass, right? It's yeah. all this nuance. I struggle with this, which is I don't treat my children the same. I just don't right. like, I don't parent them the same because they're different people. And it's, it's not that it makes me insecure, but I, they'll let you know too. Like, Oh, well, you, you know, you, especially, you know, you have a daughter, you know how different daughters are from sons, yes. but daughters are like measuring and checking and they're like, Hey, I'm calling you out on this. And, um, I wondered how you dance that dance of, of under, of trusting yourself or you together as a couple sort of saying, actually this kid we're going to let the reins out because it's better for them versus we didn't do that with the other one or yes. vice versa. How do uh, you do good, that? Good question. You know, look, my uh, good friend and, and uh, football coach, Mac Brown has a, uh, uh, a great quote on that. He had, he coached university of Texas football when Ricky Williams, the great running back was coming through. Yeah. And what Ricky, I don't know, did, did something on a play and he was obviously an all America running back. And to one of these other, like the third string running back comes up and goes, Oh, why, why didn't you, you know, why didn't he have to do that? And he goes, Mac told him, he goes, young man, I will treat you all fairly, but I will not treat you the same. Hmm. And it sums up what you, what you were saying. I mean, I look, we've got, we, we try not to go by age limit. We try not to say, like, Levi just got on social media at 15. The other two are thinking, oh, when I'm 15, I can get up. We're like, no, 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 no. Mm. No, Levi's taking care of a lot of responsibilities to have the freedom that we're giving him to try this out. Peter Livingston, if you show that ability, you may be able to do it at 14. But you might not be able to do it till you're, not, till you're 18. It's really up to you. We're not putting an age limit. You show us and you mean your mother agree that we think you're ready for that or whatever that new freedom is. That's when you get it. And Levi was much incredibly conscientious. He's one who wanted to let the reins go a little bit. Get out there. Go. He's the one that you're like, you know, I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe you ought to steal a piece of bubble gum. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you like get away with something, you know what I mean? Get, we, you know, now I hope I don't see that in big bold print. I think the other son to steal. No. Um, anyway, anyway, the, the other, you know, got another one, one of the young ones. I'm like, 
No, 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 no. This was trying to rein back in to go, hey, man, woo, you go be that reckless in the world. world's going to clamp back hardcore. Don't want, I want you to be, you know, say you need to pull it, rein it in a little bit and, and, and understand some more context and understand how other people feel and what the consequences of that action could be. Because we're going to let you, you got away with it in here, mm-hmm. but we sussed you out. <laughs> and you're going to get some consequences in the, in the household, but you do that out in the world, the world will suss you out. You may go to jail, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? You, yeah. So, you know, there's different, I think we, we, and again, we try not to put an age on it, but we, we do sit there and go, yeah, each one, you will get that freedom when you show mom and dad that you can take care of these responsibilities. When we're not, when we're here and when we're not here, because we want to, hey, what, what, do you, what are you doing when we're not here? You know what I mean? You say you're you say you're ready to go travel the world. Okay, you lead us to the to the you you tell the driver where we need to go to what airport. You take us to the gate at the airport. You take us to our seats and tell us where we need what our seats are. You put your overhead bag up there on your own. Yeah. And then when you get off the plane, you remember to get everything out of all the pockets and everything and get off at the time. You show us. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well, and and I learned this actually with my middle daughter, weirdly, that I wanted her to do that experimenting in life kind of actually while she was at home prior to going out into the world. Meaning like my youngest isn't really kind of getting in trouble. Like it sounds like your oldest boy, they, they're just kind of self-regulated naturally. And, you know, but I realized as a parent that it was like, if you were going to have a kid that was going to be, you know, looking under every rock and sort of go, what's this, what's that, that you actually wanted them to do that while they were at home as uncomfortable as that is for us as parents, I'd rather that than I send you off. If you choose to go to college or go into the world to do it then where at least you're not going to like, at least you come home every night and I can, I can see. And so there's so many different ways of of doing it. And I and I wonder too, because at times you have a very busy schedule and Laird and I go through this a lot where as the mom, and again, because I have girls, there's certain things I sort of remember being a teenage girl that I that he defers. He doesn't agree necessarily, but it's he's deferring to my judgment for a long-term play on certain things. And I wonder if you guys have a language between the two of you in parenting where you'll, she can sense, Camilla can sense, like he knows something or vice versa where you defer. Um, how do you guys dance that dance? Good question. I mean, look, we're, we'll start, we're, we are still learning that, that dance. And especially I think now that that's becoming a more complex dance because we do have two teenagers. As you know, that the, a lot more starts to come at it. They start to, for the first time, realize that, you know, uh, they have enough things going where they want more than 24 hours in a day. We have to remind you, there's not more than 24 hours in a day. If you want to do this, you're going to have to sacrifice that. You can't, we can't do it all right now. So there's time management and things like that. Um, there are things, I think, now with our daughter where we're starting to see more of, I defer with her in Vita. It's, you know, and, and, you know, I'll be more the one that will sit back and be hopefully a great representation of her, of, of a man, you know, as a, as a father figure to go, you know, and maybe I have, I try to come in there and be, it's not good cop, bad cop, but maybe I'll come in and try to, my, my friend who's raised three, daughters who are out of the household who went to school and are out of the household he said this to me his name's barton ags a friend of mine in austin says boy in these teenage years do what you can to 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 have access to them because they want to shut down at 13 they shut down until 19 and all of a sudden they come home one day at 19 and go oh i just realized everything you were saying back the last six years was right on i'm sorry about that and you're like after six years you want me to just be over it it's like whoa um, and so I, you know, I try to come in and be the one that's maybe a little more friendly 
view of the access side. So why do you like this? Why do you like this guy? He's, he's, he's nice to you. He's funny. Like, tell me what, what do you like about him? What do you like about you? You know, just to try to keep that lane open where we can have that discussion. Um, the boys, sometimes she'll, def- there's spots where she'll defer to me. And there are times where I'll have conversations with them as boys, as my s- children, as my sons, that I call them in the room and it's about their responsibility. What, if, if I let you get away with that, what kind of father am I teaching you to be to your children? If I let you get away with that, what kind of husband would I be teaching you to be to your wife when you find the person you love in your life? So that's, we'll have some straight up, hey, I know you're young, but there's a certain thing about the man of the house here and you better, you, you better buck up and you, you treat with respect and you do never talk to your mother like that or your sister like that or whatever. So we'll have boy, men to men talks and, she, and then Camilla have different ones with her and Vita. Um, and we're, we're sussing that out as we go. I think we have, I think we do a pretty good job. We, we still have, then after they all go to bed, we have those discussions about, are we still sending the same message? Cause we don't want to get into that good cop, bad cop stuff where one of them thinks, Oh, I know I can get what I want if I go to dad for this, or I can get what I want when I go to, and, and, um, you know, so we try to keep that balanced and, but that's a constant discussion and a new discussion for us right now. Oh yeah. And sometimes I'll even tell my, right now, my youngest, especially I'm like, I'm trying to be your advocate, but when you go against your dad, I go also, I'm going to have to deal with that. Right. And so you're actually not helping me help you and even getting them to understand kind of all the dynamics. It It, it is yeah. so interesting. In, you know, in getting ready to talk to you today, I was thinking about you have an exaggerated job. It's a, you know, it's a public job. Um, and I really learned something that was very hard for me to hear as a parent uh, when I we were navigating a situation with one of our daughters. I was actually at a therapist and I thought, you know, I didn't grow up with a particularly, I see your mom a lot on social media and I get the sense that, you know, there you have like a family a real family. I Laird and I Laird had a great mom. I didn't particularly grow up in a in a uh, very consistent home, right? So growing up, I thought, oh, I have a clean home. I'm in a long relationship. Um, you provided opportunities. You get to travel. You go to a good school, meaning the kids. So all the stuff that I thought we could uh, avo- like all problems. Oh, we can avoid all that because we're doing this stuff, right? And uh, the therapist said to me. Um, but can you recognize that your children actually have to navigate something you did not? And that is the unspoken, whether it's from the parents, because it usually isn't. It's usually the world saying, hey, what are you going to do? Because if you have two parents that sort of do these jobs yep. that people think and are yep. celebrated, and it never occurred to me because I never had expectation. Right. I fell into everything. I'm sure you can relate. It was like, oh, cool. You're going to pursue this. Oh, that's nice, dear. You know, like the fact I I always said, if we could pay our own bills, that was all that was expected. And so now you, you, you think, oh, our kids have been around the world. They've met, you know, really incredible people. They're set. But when that got pointed out to me, I thought, oh, wow. So from very young, whether you guys put it on or not. You're their parents. You're making their dinner. You're cutting their vegetables. You're talking about hard work and f- pursuing their passions. But the world is still saying to them, what are you going to do? I wonder, you know, if there's conversations about that, if, it, you know, it's been brought up by your kids. It has. I mean, the literally the world has said to them. Oh, I thought your dad would have pulled up in a Lamborghini. Oh, I bet you live in a, in a, in a big five story rich house. Yeah. Um, they have had to navigate through friends wanting to be friends with them because, oh, you're Matthew and Camilla McConaughey's son or daughter. Yeah. Um, so what we've tried to navigate is going, yes, you are. And you better keep your head high and your heart high because mom and dad have worked hard to get and been very fortunate to get what we have 
and we feel like we've done our best to do it the right way. And we are going to be honored with that. And you be honored with that. Yes. Not an accident. We didn't lie, cheat, and steal our way here. So hold your head high and never, never get shameful about that at all. At the same time, that doesn't entitle you. You're not entitled to get whatever you want based on our last name. We will help inevitably just happens. You will get through some certain doors that other people may have more trouble getting into. Once you're in that door, it's on you. What are you going to do when you get in the door? Um, I don't know. People call that nepotism. I don't know. There are certain, it just comes with, it. we get to the front of certain lines. Do we, are there times that we go, no, we don't want that, 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 that we don't want that red carpet or behind that. We don't want that backstage pass because we wanted to see, Hey, gotta, you gotta understand, man, we're taking the yellow car to the big plane, not the black car to the small plane. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how, how, how it works sometimes. But at the same time, they see it, it happens. And there's a lot of times we go with us and we do take that backstage pass or go to the front of that line. But what are you going to do when you get in that door? Um, we try to go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I was going to say though, do you, do you though remind them that just because you've taken this path and you know, people you're adored, both of you are adored and celebrated because you've brought a lot of joy to people. Um, but that, I guess, how do you get the kids to realize that whatever life they choose right. to build will be the one that you guys right. want for them? Care, care, we talk a lot about character. We yeah. talk about where, where value is and we talk about how important um, money is in life, but how, how you get it and what you do. Because I talk, share a lot of stories. I said, I know a lot of people in, in my position, there are a lot of people that have a whole lot more money than we do that are not happy. They are deemed successful by the world, but they're unhappy. They don't have a, they don't have stable relationships. They are lonely. They don't trust anyone. They don't trust themselves. They're constantly hiring people to insulate themselves from the rest of the world. And we're like, is that really how you want to, would you want to, would you would want to live? Try to get them to uh, go, what are your unique abilities that you innately have that you've been born with and which of those are you willing to work harder at to get good at and then thirdly if you want to make a living what you think you do are any or are, are, are that unique ability that you want to work hard at are you going to supply something that the world demands <laughs> yeah you know because that's how you're gonna to have to pay your rent um and I look if you want, we've told them, if you want, if you are happy living in your two bedroom house in a spot where you really love and you wake up every morning, you feel good and you are working month to month, but you're happy doing what you do. Bravo. That's a real definition of success that is more successful than somebody who has a billion dollars, but they're lonely have trust, broken relationships, and are li and and are and are regretting how they got to where they are. Yeah. So we talk a lot about character, um, and try our try not you know, but inherently, I'm sure they feel pressure from the outside world, you know, yeah. to be like, well, think, you know, but yeah, I, they, they, I don't think we're giving it to them. Yeah. Are no. I know. The parents may not. It's just I'm always curious because I it never occurs to us, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh wait a second, you mean being loved in a good education isn't going to prevent you from feeling those things that the world is asking you, you know? Yeah. Are you surprised? Like if you think of yourself and obviously we all grow and change so much, but as your young adult male at 25, are you, does it, cause I, I confess I'm personally very blown away that I'm still married. And when I say that, it's just cause I didn't have a great example. And I met my husband at 25. And so I'm almost, you know, all in 28 years. And I, I always think, oh, I didn't think I was going to be one of those family people that could actually even pull it off a little bit, you know, the right. consistency. So if you think about, cause you have a very interesting, and, and I don't say this from um, an informed, intimate position, the perception, I see you as two people that are, you've, 
you feel like you have your own independent selves. Camilla still feels very, you know, on her own real estate as her own person, as do you, but yet you feel really family connected and oriented. Do, are you, sometimes do you kind of go, oh, wow, so far we're, I'm pulling this off. Like we're figuring out how to dance the dance and, and make it work as a family. Um, I'm never, I mean, I, I must say this, I, I, before starting a family, my only thing I ever knew I wanted to be was a father before falling in love with Camilla and asking for her hand in marriage and us starting a family. I fully expect to pull this off <laughs> now fully. That's expect bold. To pull that's bold. Yeah, I guess so. But I'd, I'd, I can say that until, mm. um, that does not mean that we do not recalibrate <laughs> and reassess and go, whoa, did I just run and left you behind there? Oh, am I? Oh, because as you know, we, 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 we fall in love with someone for base, beautiful reasons. That does not mean that we don't change. Now, I think Kamenai's moral bottom line is solid. And I think that that compass keeps us grounded, even when I'm over here and she's over here and we got to figure out, are we saying the same thing in two different ways? Or are we just on two paths? And if we're on two paths, let, can we just make sure, how about this? If instead of diverging, let's just, it's okay to be a little bit separate, but can they be parallel? Mm. You know, and because it's not always like this. It's just not. No. Um, and to think in, and be let down when it's not like that is really not realistic, I think, or fair to the other one in the relationship because, you know, we, we, we have different things turn us on at different times in life when we get things. And I know I get creative and I'm running and I'm like head down and not even looking up and looking up, looking back. And she's going, yeah, I'm right here. I got your back. Keep going. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Jeez, I hadn't even looked up in weeks. You know what I mean? Um, so we have a, we have a, we have a trust there, but that takes constant, uh, uh, updating and it, sometimes things get out of balance. Maybe I'm in the debit and she's in the credit, or maybe I'm in the credit and I'm feeling like all, I'm catching all green lights and she's going, man, I'm over here stuck in the yellow. And I got like, well, all right, slow down. What are we, what are we doing? Did I take off without, did I drop your hand there while we were running? Did I get too far ahead? You know what I mean? Or how, how are we doing? Um, and constantly just trying to keep, you, know, you never keep all of those things, I think at peak running order at once, family, spirit, health, fa you know, you never keep them all just running at peak condition. And I just try to, we try to keep a good eye of like, Oh, we're running low over here, but we're still in the, we're still in the black. Oh, but yeah. so, let's just get in the, in the debit section. Let's not get into the red and let something go for too long that we got to go. Oh my gosh, we got a problem. Yeah. And so it's just kind of a, a weekly, daily maintenance. I'm not going to say daily. Sometimes it's daily. And that's yeah. that can be tiring for both of us, for both, 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 uh, um, cup, both spouses, you know, and it's nice when you're cruising on cruise control, but it, it you got a week, two weeks, a month, and you're rolling, you're in the groove together. You're finishing each other's sentences. You know exactly what I was thinking. She knows what I was thinking. We kind of agree. Yes. Don't even have to say it, but that does you have to, we have to recalibrate all the time, but I fully expect it. And I'm, and, and I'm committed as much as I can be humanly possible to making it work. And I believe that, you know, a lot of times um, one of our challenges in, 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 in life, people, me included, is, in relationships is that, boy, it gets hot and, and we want to quit early. And there's an investment we can have with overcoming those hot spots that do build and we, we get some scars on us, you know, some calluses and it's good. It's armor for a relationship and it's armor for parents to follow through on the nose. It's like, damn, that was hard. It's one in the morning. I got to work at seven. Oh, okay. But it was worth it. It's just, I got, I got, I got another scar, you know, but it, it was, it was worth it. And we don't bat a thousand by any means, but we just hang in there and hang in the fight, you know? Yeah. I think that's a really important point, which is, uh, you know, not only staying committed, but 
let me ask you, do you think, because I often wonder this, I sometimes feel like when we have the capacity to s- sort of make ourselves like, I don't want to use the word happy because that's a, a misnomer, but when we're in pursuit, when we're, we're not looking for the outside world, even our partner or our children to make us happy, that we're make, we're taking that responsibility ourselves, that I believe that it then also becomes easier to say, I'm in and I'm committed. I, I, I mean- think- I think those things go part and parcel. Uh, I think you're hundred percent right. I mean, I think, you know, it, it, it ebbs and flows. I mean, I think we all need our individual agency. I know there's certain things I have to do for me. I call it writing. Writing is a solitary thing that I do. It's self-indulgent, but it gives me a great sense of significance. And if I have that significance of the daily achievement of writing or pulling something, I'm much more present at home and able to go talk to Camilla and see what you got going and, and how are we, my rhythms are just better. They tell me, Camilla's the one that'll tell me, you need to go, get, get, get out of here. Get, go off in your solo place for two weeks. And, and then she tells me, don't call, don't nothing. Stay up, say, do whatever you want. Well, of course, what I do, that's what I'm calling I'm calling more, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but how does she keep, you know, her individual agency? She's a wonderful mother. She takes care of me as well. We have to check in to make sure she's chosen to love to do that. And she's taken, she sacrificed certain jobs that she's been offered to pursue herself that she said no, because that would consistently mean I have to be in that place. And because my family comes first, I don't, I may need to be somewhere else at that time. So I cannot commit to that schedule. That's a sacrifice on her part. She also is, 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 is part of the reason we've been apart for so short of, so minimal times that the, our family's apart. That's, that's her going, oh no, that's not negotiable. Well, I don't care what it takes. We got to, if it's only for 48 hours, fly across the world and get back over here and we're going to get back together. And what are we going to do? We got to do nothing. We're going to hang out. Cook scrambled eggs at midnight and watch a damn show. We don't have to do something special. It's just that we're in each other's space and hanging out. Um, and she's the load bearer on, on that for our family. But we, you know, I think each person does need their individual agency that them solo, separate from being our partner, separate from being a mother, separate from being a father, has something that 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 we do that is ours that fills that fills us and so we try to keep t- tab tabs on that um but i would say you know mo well, i gotta I'm, I'm i get pretty selfish i would say you know dude, camille sacrifices a lot for my for me to chase my my convictions in art and stuff and you know when i the more i recognize that and understand that without her i wouldn't have the, i wouldn't be as fulfilled I wouldn't have the freedom to fulfill of myself or create like I do when I recognize that, oh, this is such an asset, even with my responsibilities as a husband and as a father, um, that sure, sure helps. Sure does help us. It, it is amazing when one, you know, Laird's a genius every time because he likes for me to cook him dinner and I enjoy cooking. So when I put food down and I really put effort into it, it's not like, oh, I just throw anything down with it with him. It's like a thing. And um, the amount of appreciation and all this. And I'm like, this guy is a genius because, you know, lo and behold, the next night comes around and I'm like, what can I do for Laird? You know, and, be, you know, that when people go, I just want to be appreciated. It sounds so simple, but what you're saying is so true because to be of service to your family um, is not only, it it gives you something that you can't measure. Um, It's exhausting. It's so enriching in the deepest, most quiet, real way. But if your partner gives you a look like, hey, you know, thank you. It doesn't have to be a grand thing every night, but just it's a, a look that's fuel. Like you're good. Like, here we go. You know? So I'm, I want to, I want to finish this conversation up 
um, I'd be remiss, you know, my, usually on this podcast, I'm talking to scientists and doctors about metabolic function and all these, you know, kind of very um, technical and, and scientific things, and then trying to figure out how do we make this actually mean anything in real life. You, you have maintained great health. And I know you've had to, you know, mess around for certain parts to, you know, be bigger or smaller, but your overall level of fitness and health has been very consistent. Um, I'm just curious now, um, and I, I know there m maybe is a, a little more time right now, but probably not much more. What do you do? Do you have rules and principles that you live by for your food and your sleep and your movement practices? Or is it just, you know, you kind of throw it together? It changes. Um, I mean, you know, my one sort of rule that's an easy one that I just try to share is break a sweat once a day. That, you know, sometimes that's going to the gym and really breaking a sweat. Sometimes that's going for a five mile run and really breaks it. Sometimes that's dancing. Sometimes that's playing with the kids in the backyard. Um, that's my baseline sort of rule. I do average nine and a half hours sleep a night. How? You, you are a good I've, sleeper, that good of a sleeper? I've been doing that since for 30 years. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, that's good to do that. I'm I know people, friends of mine get really pissed off. At me what do you, you just feel safe and you don't worry about stuff at night? Like what's up with that? How do you do that? You can go to sleep and stay asleep. Do you have a cool room? Is it dark? Like, do you do all that? Like, or you just go, oh my God, you're just one of those people. I, just, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I mean, look, if I slept on the couch and, you know, and then the doors open and mosquitoes are coming in, it's getting hot and it's 8 a.m. in the morning, I'm, I'll wake up. But I'm an, I'm an 11 to 8.30 guy, um, sleep-wise. Um, and, yeah, it pisses a lot of my friends off. Um, Great. Uh, I drink, I mean, I've always drank a lot of water. I've won water, some water drinking championships in bars. <laughs> Um, okay. I, uh, you know, now I'm into more of, uh, as I, as I found it, found a new hobby, tennis. Oh, it's the first hobby I've found in 30 years. And it's a hard game, isn't it? Like how technical it is. Game. Technical, but also the, the, the heart rate, the heart rate gets really high multiple, multiple times during working out or training. Um, so I have, I'm doing tennis and bands right now. I'm just doing nothing but bands and, and, and tennis. And well, luckily, was my anatomy. Reason? Was there a reason were you uh, giving your joints a break on weights, or what were you? Yeah, what were you yeah, I kept finding that that um, I kept injuring. I kept injuries. Finding I was getting small injuries from going to the gym. Um, after I would get in really good core shape and everything, I kept I kept finding that as soon as I'd go to the the quick, uh, um, you know, explosive moves, I tweak some lower back, upper back, neck, shoulder, and I was like. Eh. And I, um, I, my anatomy allows me to get big really quickly. And, 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 uh, I wanted to say, you know what, what about a longer, more sinewy body? I want to see if I can still hold some muscle mass. And I found this sport that I can compete in. And so it's so much more fun than running five miles to go play tennis. And I'm like, oh, and I feel myself getting a little bit better at it. Oh, I can't wait to go out there again. And look, I'm drenched. I'm wringing out my socks. Great. That was so much fun. Um, so I'm allowing the play pleasure. And, and the improvement aspect. Yeah. And what, and what about food? Are you, are you sort of just have, you eat whatever you have? No, time I, don't eat whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty Spartan in the morning. Uh, and uh, um, whether that's called intermittent or just skipping breakfast, pretty Spartan in the morning. Um, I, Heavy on heavy on protein, specifically seafood. My favorite is beef, but I do notice that the, if I if I'm heavy on beef, I do have more inflammation. I think that's one of the things that we 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 battle as we age is is inflammation, whether that's from beef or alcohol or what have you. Um, but and then and then I, I eat well. Um, and if I'm look, if I'm feeling like oh I need to you know lose a couple, I can go for I can just that one little thing of. Well, don't eat, eat dinner before seven o'clock. It's such a good, it's the, it's the, you know, and everyone goes, and I'm with you. Hey, I love it on Friday night where I'm going like, uh-uh, 
pasta at 1030, baby. We're in. That's fine. I give myself, you know, a break to go. You know, the kids are having, the kids want pizza. I can sit there and go, okay, I'm not having pizza, but I sure do like to clean up their plate. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? So I'm not puritanical on it unless it becomes something specific. Um, I try to keep myself ready to go. If I have a role or something I'm going to do, right. I want to be two to three weeks out from going. I can get more in, in, in more specific shape for that if I just hone in. Um, any supplements that you that you? No, love? you know what? Garlic. Okay. I've gotten off, and you know, you probably know this with supplements, or at least if you if you or maybe maybe you disagree, but I really found that supplement supplements are like. Face creams, they're great right when you take them. You feel the difference, but there's a, they have a shelf life. Give them a couple months, and all of a sudden it plateaus out. And I found that with my supplements, it's, it's always nice to go, well, get on, and then get off of them, then go off. And when you come back to the same supplement, you feel it work like it did in the beginning again. But overall, so it's almost like a diet. If you're eating the exact same diet, Every single day, your body will start to go, we got the gig, man. It, 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 the gig's up now. You need to change it up to make your metabolism work in a different way. I find that to be true with supplements is, as well. So to, I'll have times where I get off them. Right now, for the last three months, I've been on nothing but a garlic pill. Okay. Um, in, in wrapping this up, if you could make an invitation as a, as a husband of a lesson you've learned and as a father to people – or just a reminder, because I, I do think we go into it with one idea and then we come out with personalized lessons that we're like, oh, this is valuable. Like for me, for example, as a parent, one of mine, and it's not uh, new, is is really to listen, not to fix uh, fix it, right? Because that's what I want to do. And I'm like, no, just listen. And so I'm wondering if you could if you have one that feels important to you as a husband and as a parent that you would like to leave with us. Oh, as a husband and a parent, um, follow through is tough mm -hmm. and it's tough. Um, and maybe if I go back to that thing about, I think we, we, we pull the parachute too early. Sometimes we, we, we quit when the going gets rough or when it gets hot. And we just go that go go that next extra step. Don't then don't and don't play with the especially with spouses. Don't start don't play the tit for tat win loss game. Go oh, it's okay. a, it's a no win for, it's a no win for both of us. And I'm guilty of playing it. And I have to catch myself and go. And I'll notice it was me being insecure. It was me at a time where I wasn't feeling significant enough to have the confidence enough to sit there and go. Yep. Yeah. Come out yeah. winning. And yeah. it's, it's, and I don't end up winning in that situation where I think I'm, I, I won. Ultimately I don't end up winning. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I lose the, the next day, you know, um, with, with my wife, if I'm playing that game. Um, and then, I don't know that I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that thing with kiddos yeah. right now, that, that teenage years, try to keep access, try to keep some access. Cause you'd rather them telling you, Hey, I'm lost and can't get home rather than saying I'm too afraid to call them. Yeah. And so I'm going to get in the car with you, even though you're drunk to drive, you know, whatever that may be. Amen. Well, Matthew McConaughey, you're already a New York times bestseller. Your new book out for kids is called just because you also read it. Am I not mistaken? Yeah, yeah, I read it. I do the audio. Yeah. I mean, I listen to a part of it and it's unbelievable. So I, I really, and I'm not just saying this, honestly, I, I really appreciate this book because it is, it's just really thoughtful and beautiful and poignant and timeless. And so thank you for writing it. And thanks for spending time with me today. Thank you. You're welcome, Gabby. Thanks for enjoying it. Thanks for sharing with me that you did. And I okay. uh, enjoyed the, I enjoyed the uh, chat. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you want to learn more, there is a ton of valuable information on my website. All you have to do is go to GabrielleReese.com or head to the episode show notes to find a full breakdown with helpful links to studies, research, books, podcasts, and so much more. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and send them to at Gabby Reese on Instagram. 
And if you feel inspired, please subscribe. I'll see you next week. This podcast is brought to you by Laird Superfood. In 2015, Laird Superfood was created, but it was really actually created in my kitchen by my husband, Laird. And he was always experimenting with coffees and other ingredients for performance. And lo and behold, Laird Superfood was born. And we have beautiful coffees and creamers and protein bars and other things. But one of the things I'm very excited about is our new greens product. A lot of Americans are not getting enough fruits and vegetables. Something like 85% are not getting enough vegetables and 80% are not getting enough fruit. And we need fiber. So for me personally, I'm always trying to encourage people and I know this is Laird's philosophy as well, is real food, right? Let's try to get as much of the good stuff, the minerals, the nutrients, the macro, the micronutrients from real food, but it's hard to do. Our soil's different, people are busy, maybe you don't know what you're getting at your grocery store. So this is a way to get it done and bridge some of those nutritional gaps. And what I also really appreciate about it, besides that it tastes good, I just do it in water first thing in the morning, then I'm done. And then I actually go and have my coffee after, but we use upcycled fruits and veggies. So things that won't go to waste, maybe they're not really pretty. So we use them in our fruits and veggies. We use no fillers. So your body actually knows what to do with the ingredients. They know how to absorb it. There's fiber. And also we never use any artificial or natural flavors. Uh, This is something that is harder than people realize because to amplify flavors, a lot of times even, you know, using natural flavors is the way to do it. So I'm excited to share with you. And if you'd like to try it out, all you have to do is go to LairdSuperfood.com. And if you punch in the code Gabby, G-A-B-B-Y, 20, you will receive 20% off.